What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, well, we have got the gray truck kind of jammed in here, right? So there is some work that I wanna do to this thing, and so that's why it's in here today. And the very first thing we're going to be doing, guys, is I've got my hitch repainted. It looked terrible, and I wanted to repaint it, so I resprayed that thing outside just with some Rust-Oleum, just some cheap um, semi-gloss black. Same thing I actually used on the wipers here that you guys saw me do, but either way, um, we need to get the hitch back on. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna take the spare tire out because honestly, it's worthless because if I ever had a flat, um, well, for, for one, I generally keep new tires, but if I ever had a flat, it's not gonna work with this drop anyway. So there's no sense in, in it being under there. And hopefully that will make me some room to do what else I want to do, which is the main reason I'm doing this video. And that is I want to install this airlift helper kit. So you guys know that I have helper bags. If you watch the drop video, I always put helper bags. Well, I don't always, but most of the time when I do a drop on these trucks, I put helper bags in. Uh, I will link those in the description what I'm using, but very rarely do, well, actually I've never done a kind of load controller like this, where it's like, um, you just push a button and air it up. Now, originally I had said that I wanted to do one with a remote, but the more I got to thinking about it, I just didn't think it was worth the extra money. I mean, you're talking about almost triple the cost of what I've got here. So, um, you got everything here to do what we need to do. It comes obviously with new lines, the wiring, um, it's got a couple different things, like it's got a gauge pod if you wanna mount this in different spots. And then that little bitty box right there is a compressor. Now they do make different versions of this. They make like a heavy load version and they make the light load. I chose to go with the light load because that compressor will go up to 100 pounds um, maximum. And honestly, guys, these bags are only supposed to take 90 pounds tops. So I figured we would be well within the area that it would operate and not have any issues. But what we really need to do is we need to get this thing off the ground a little bit. I think I'm just gonna lift up in the back and then get that hitch on, get the spare tire out, and then we'll kind of dig into this and kind of see where I wanna mount things, where I wanna wire things. One other thing on this kit, the older kits required you to run an airline into the vehicle. This kit is all electronic. That's another reason why I wanted to try this. It's a newer version of something they've had out for a long time. And this does not put air in the bags individually. This is a do what they call a single path system. Now they do make a dual path if you wanted to do each bag individually, but it's quite a bit more expensive as well. So uh, anyway, let's get this thing off the ground, get underneath it and see what we need to break. One of the things I actually got to thinking about was, hey, it makes more sense instead of lifting it off the ground and then trying to put this on. Let's just go ahead and put it on while it's close to the ground. I'm telling you guys, crazy smart. So we've got the original bolts that go in this thing. I'm trying to maneuver it under here by myself. And I may have to move, I've kind of got some stuff plugged around here, just zip tied up. Probably gonna have to move that. My, We're gonna relocate this obviously because this new piece that we're putting in as a matter of fact, we can go ahead and take this off. Um, but the new piece we're gonna put in will allow us to also air up manually. So let's say the compressor ever went bad or you needed to air it up manually. We can, we're gonna add that back, but I'm gonna put it in a better location and then just, I just did this temporary because I knew we were gonna do something different. So let's cut these off and then we'll get this up into place. Now you should have four bolts per side. You'll have three down this, one right here that goes up into the bottom of the bumper and then obviously on the other side. So generally what I like to do when I'm by myself is I like to start these center ones first. So that's where we're gonna start. And I may have to just put my leg underneath it. Give it a little more lift. And they're all the same size, other than the ones that go in the very front. And you can see they have a nut on the end of them. Probably should have spent some, probably should have spent some time and painted those as well. One 
once we get them threaded a little ways in, we'll grab the next one up front here and just kind of keep working our way through. There, we got a pretty good start where it'll hold itself anyway. So we'll go ahead and put the rest of these in and then we'll, uh, we'll get it off the ground and take a look underneath it. Now that we've got that just kind of snugged up, I'm gonna tighten it once I get under the truck. But if you have a lock, that's what that guy does, locks your spare tire in place. Some of them have it, some of them don't. We need to go get our, um, the tool that takes this down now I took this out of the car or out of the truck because obviously we put stereo in it, but part of your jack assembly goes in there and reels this down. So I'm gonna go grab it and get this tire. We'll try to get the tire down on the ground. So if you've never taken one of these out before, if you just use the squared off end here, push it in and then I'm gonna use a little bit longer of a piece just so I can get out here. And then your jack will, or your, sorry, your crowbar will actually go on the end of this and hopefully we can crank it down. And it should be tight one way and loose the other way. It should be lefty loosey, just like everything else. And you should see your tire start to drop and mine is dropping. Of course, it doesn't have very far to go and I'm hoping that we can drag it out of there once it's down. And I think we've got it far enough down. We'll go ahead and just take the thing out of the middle. And I, like, I'm probably gonna take this whole reel assembly out. At this point, we're under the truck. I've got it supported by the jack and jack stands under the rear end. I've also got the front wheels chalk, guys. Anytime you lift the front or the back, you wanna chalk the wheels. So got this all tightened up. I went ahead and hooked up my wiring that was you know, original to the truck. And you could see my T fitting up here from where I had my old connection piece on. And so we'll, we'll talk about that later, but right now I've got to find a place to mount the compressor, right? And the instructions in one, in one section say, don't mount it outside the vehicle, mount it inside the vehicle. And then the very next page it says, oh yeah, you can mount it outside the vehicle. <laughs> and so I, I'm going to mount it outside the vehicle. Obviously you don't want to indirect water. So don't mount it in like a fender well or something like that. Don't mount it under the hood where there's a bunch of heat. I'm thinking right here will be a good spot. We're not going to be using this reel anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 15 millimeter out, get this thing out of the way, and you can mount this thing upside down. It'll be in the middle. I don't think it's going to get a ton of water throw up back here as far as off the tires because it'll be, you know, somewhat centered. And then I might try to tuck it a little closer to the front. So this kind of bar here protects it from any, you know, possible rocks throwing up or even water for that matter. So I'm gonna go ahead, take that 15 out and we'll kind of set that up there and see what it looks like. Now that we got that um, out of the way, I went ahead and marked, I don't know if you guys can see, but I marked the four holes. I set that thing up in place, use a pencil and mark those. And then I used a center punch to make sure that um, our drill bit doesn't go crazy. Now it says to use a 1360 force drill bit. I thought that was a little big, so I stepped down to a 3 16 and we're gonna drill a hole here, here, there, and there. So four holes in total. I wanted to put it a little closer, but we're running into this guy here. And so I decided not to do that. And obviously you've got a couple things um, that are mounted or were mounted from the factory here. So you don't have the option to go over. So I kind of put it to where it made the most sense. So I'm gonna drill these holes and then you're just using a self-tapping screw to hold this thing in place. Um, that's the other reason I didn't want to make the hole too big and then risk having to put a nut on the top. Now we do have access to do that if we had to, but let's get these holes drilled and we'll mount that thing. Now that we've got this mounted, I'm going to go ahead and take this time to, I wrap the ground around to this side and I'm going to ground it like somewhere in here. So I'm going to drill another hole, put another self tapper in, and then I'm going to scrape off any coating that might be on this. So we get a nice, um, nice and solid ground on this guy here. So, uh, I just tucked it kind of under. And then guys, the other thing is be careful when you're tightening that down. It is just plastic. I wish it was a metal bracket, but it isn't. 
It is plastic, so I tighten it down by hand. Don't use an impact to do that. And uh, anyway, let's get this grounded out, and then maybe we can run some, start running some line anyway. Now you can see we've got it grounded, and um, we have to add a couple T's here, guys. So here's what I'm thinking. Since I have a T already right here, um, we need to add a couple more. So this one, this T obviously goes to one airbag, the other side goes the other airbag, and this is how we inflated it before. I'm wanting to keep a manual inflation here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole in this little pocket right here that holds, so basically we can have it outside on this guy, make it look really nice, kinda of tighten it up there. So I'm gonna leave this T here, I'm probably gonna change the line to get a little longer line. Okay, so now we need to add a T here, obviously, to go to the compressor. So we're gonna add a T, and I'm gonna put it right in here because there's a hole where we had the old tire um, reel came through. So I'm gonna put it right there so we can go straight through this hole. And then we're gonna come into another T. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, right? Um, and, and then that T is going to go, one is gonna go up front to the cab. Remember I told you guys you don't have to run air in the cab. I was lying, apparently you do. And so we're gonna have a T right here that comes One's going to go to the cab, the other is going to go back here to this T, and then into the line. So we're going to have a T here, a line coming through, and then we're going to have another T right here, one going to the front, and one going to this line right here. So I know that sounds confusing, uh, but here's what we do need to know. I'm going to go ahead and do all this off camera, uh, because there's really no way to like show you how I'm doing it with the area that I'm in here. So make sure when you're cutting this, you're using something very sharp. You don't want any jagged edges. You don't want to pinch it. So what I generally do is use a brand new razor blade. So we've got a nice clean cut. Uh, but what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and cut that, install these tees, and then I'll show you guys what we've got once I get that finished. Let's take a look at what we got accomplished. So like I said, we put a T here, cut this, put a T. Came off that, came to this T. Now from that T, we went into the compressor. I will tell you guys, get this a little wet um, with maybe some dish soap or something because it's tough to push on. And then the other T we have, or the other end of the T, we have going to the line and it's all stacked up right there. So we've got all that in. I did go ahead and make a new line from here down to where I mounted this manual inflation. So you can see it right here. I actually like that. Looks a lot better than the zip tied piece I had on for temporary use. And I recut all my lines because I think my razor blade was a little dull last time, but I, you need to make sure you just got a clean cut, guys. So like I said, a, a razor blade, if you could put it up against the concrete, that's best. But at this point, we need to route both the power and this line up to the very front of the truck, which I honestly, I'm gonna go down the same line I'm gonna go down the same line that all my other stuff, so like my backup camera, if you guys caught that video. Basically, if you didn't, you can go back and check it out, but um, I went, same way with the power wire for the amp, I went all the way down that frame rail. So I'll just tie up, zip tie to what I've got there already. And so what I'll do is I'll hook a power line up. Now this kit does come with a power line off the main harness. I just don't think it's long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna run my own wire, um, probably 12 gauge, 10 gauge. This looks to me like, I don't know, it's probably close to 12 if I had to guess. So I'll probably run a, at least a 12 or a 10 um, all the way up the frame. And then I'll put a, like a spade connector on, on the other end of it. And we'll go ahead and connect that. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys, I'll, I'll zip tie it up to the front and then I'll kind of show you what we've got before we take the next step, which is having to go into the cab. I figured I'd show you some progress that we've made. Uh, I would tell you guys running this airline is not the easiest thing because it's all coiled up and it wants to hold that. But what I've done is we've zip tied basically to the same section where my um, camera goes back to the back. So all the way up the frame there, 
Hopefully you guys can see that. And this is where I'm to right here. So I've just kind of threaded up, um, up past that very front of the frame. And I'll try to show you guys that once I'm finished. But for the most part in the back, we're all finished. I've got everything. Um, well, you guys saw that a minute ago, but it's all tied up back there. Once I get probably past that piece of the frame that I want to go to up front, then I'm going to set the back of the car down or the truck and I'll probably lift the front because I've got to find a way to come through the firewall. Now, I will tell you that this kit um, came with this long red wire to go back to the um, compressor. I cut that off and the reason I did was because I wanted to run from the back to the front and this is the only thing that's supposed to come through the firewall. We may, we may mess with that. I'm not sure that I love that, but either way, uh, that's why I cut that. So I can always solder it back um, once I come through the firewall with it. But either way, if you guys see the, your kit and are wondering, I, I mean, I guess you could start and try to thread this all through the firewall and then go to the back. But I'm telling you, I didn't want to fight that airline trying to get a big chunk of it through the cab. And so that's why I did what I did. So either way, I'll, uh, we'll cut back in a second. I'll show you kind of where I've got it to. And hopefully we can find a way to go through the firewall. It didn't take long to make it, you know, to that point I was talking about. But I've got the front lifted up. But here's what I want to do. Um, I, I can't see a whole lot of access points. Obviously, there's a ton of stuff in the way. We want to stay away from the headers. You know, we want to stay kind of over here. But I'm thinking I'm going to take the inner fender liner off. And the reason I think I'm gonna do that is to me, it might give me a little more room to see what's going on back here as far as maybe there's a better spot to put a hole or maybe there's a spot that we can sneak through that's already there. So uh, I'm gonna take my little clip removing tools. So these guys to pull out the centers of this and then on the ones, the other ones, I'll list these in the description down below. I use them all the time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get this fender well all the way out. We should only have just clips I see one clip on the inside. I can push that out, uh, but the rest of them should come out from here. We get that out of the way, and I think, I think, guys, we'll be able to have a little more access to see what's going on in here and maybe a good spot to either drill a hole or, like I said, find a way to come through the factory spot. After taking, I didn't even take all the clips out. I didn't take the front ones, those ones that pull out differently. I didn't take those out, and you can see I made a mess of junk, which Obviously this needed to be clean, but you can see where the e-brake wire goes through right there. Um, while I don't think I want to try to sneak through that same spot, it gives me an idea of an area to start. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to hop in the truck. We're going to pop that piece of trim out, um, the little pillar down here in the corner. And uh, we're going to take a look at, at where that comes through because there's a nice flat area like right here that's flat and the, then the floor starts to bend. We could even come through here, but I'd like to come through in this area because um, we're not you know, trying to go against anything. It'd be a nice little transition if I could find where that floor starts to bend and go there. Uh, but either way, we need to pull the carpet back and take a look at what's going on inside. And uh, I, think, I think that's probably where we'll go through. I don't see any other place. I mean, look, you can see up top there, I just don't think the reach to that position, like right behind the brake master, you can see on the firewall, there's a, a grommet going in. I, I probably could get to that, but I just, I don't love that spot. I'd rather come in, um, you know, coming straight up from the bottom and go straight up through the floor, especially with this airline because it doesn't have a ton of bend in it like the wiring does so let's pull this apart inside and take a look at what area we need to probably drill i thought i was originally going to drill a hole i just don't think that's in the cards uh, so here's what i've done i took this rail off pulled the carpet back you can see this big rubber padding and i'd have to drill through it and that would be a pain so i noticed that i do have access i pulled the little fuse block out here and let me see if i can get you guys down in here um right back behind the fuse block you see that rubber grommet hopefully you guys can see that on the firewall yeah you can see it now um i'm gonna pull that thing through and that's where i'm gonna come through uh it's got gobs of room we can access it from the outside you remember i said that i didn't want to do that but i'd rather do that than try to drill through or cut out that padding in the floor that guy 
is, where's it at? Oh, right there. See it up top there? That one that I said I thought, um, you know, I, I actually think that'll work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull that out of the firewall. So I'm gonna pull from this direction. It's got some slack on the wire. And um, once I get it out, then I could take the tape off of it on the outside here. And we're just gonna thread our new stuff through there. It should be big enough to push through. And I'll kind of show you guys um, once I get it unthreaded, maybe what it looks like. So you can see I've got it pushed in and I was able to unplug the plug. There's only one plug that comes out of that and that's actually for the wiper motor. So right above that, you can just unplug it. That way you have some slack. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread all my stuff in there. So these two, line, the line and the power line, I'm gonna thread that in there and then we'll go in the truck and we can push it through the, the um, actual opening. It has quite a bit of room, and you'll, which you'll see when we get in the truck. But yeah, that, that was a little easier than I thought actually. I wanted to show you guys what I've got here. So this, this grommet actually separates. So the back comes out of it and I made that a little bigger but I've got all my stuff ran through. I know it looks like a mess right now, but um, I've got two additional wires. So the yellow and the green have nothing to do with what we're doing right now. I've got a power wire. This black wire is all I had laying around and we'll explain what that is on the harness that I've got laying down here on the ground that comes with the kit. Um, and then the other one is obviously the airline. So at this point, I'm good to put it back together and push it back through the firewall. Um, I did pull the clip through, you can see, you got enough room to do that. And just to give me a little more room to work, you know, right here, I'm not like tucked up under the dash. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all this stuff, you know, kind of some slat or some tension on it, push this back up into place, put this back in, and um, we should be good to continue our wiring. I'll show you once we get it up in place, um, kind of what we're looking like both inside and outside. So we've got it pushed through and I still need to tape it off. But before I do that, I'm going to take this red wire that you see on top of the tire and uh, we're going to tie it in with the wire that we ran to the back. Remember I said, well, for one, I didn't think we had enough to reach where the compressor was at up to the power spot. And then I want to talk about this Let's, let's show you all this mess here. So on this wiring harness that came with this kit, you have um, a piece, this piece right here. So the black and the gray that you see right here in front of you with the connectors on them, that goes to a pressure switch. So it keeps a set amount of pressure at all times. That's supposed to go in the truck. I don't love that. I'm going to put it in the truck though. This one right here goes to the gauges or the gauge. Um, so that obviously goes in the truck. The relay itself goes to the truck, inside the truck. And the only wire they said needs to go outside the truck is this big red wire that, like I said, goes to the compressor. Um, that's why I ran the red wire through there. I didn't have enough. And so we're gonna solder that connection inside, get it to the, the length that I need it. Uh, that's why I haven't taped any of that up either. Uh, so other than that, we've got the airline in the truck. We've got two extra lines that we'll talk about, like I said, in a different video. Uh, we got a black wire. So that black wire is just because it didn't have any uh, pink. Uh, this pink wire is supposed to stay in the truck. This guy right here, the big thick pink wire is supposed to stay in the truck. And that is where you grab power. Um, and, and here's my problem with that, guys. They send a fuse, right? A fuse link that you can see that yellow wire over there on my the blanket on the floor. That's supposed to tag into your factory fuse panel. I don't like that. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put a fuse on it, but I'm gonna come under the um, the hood of the truck. That's why I ran that black wire. So basically, the these two wires, the pink and the red, the thick, the two thick wires are gonna go outside the truck. You could tag into. It's got an add a fuse um, that comes with it to jump a fuse. I just don't like that. I figured we'd run it out since we were coming out with wires and the, the literally the junction boxes right here, we could just tag directly into that. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, at this point, like I said, I'm gonna solder this end of the red wire to the wire coming up from the truck. We can tie all, zip tie this all up and then I will go ahead and tape the outside of this to make sure that we don't have any issues as far as water running into it. 
Uh, it's pretty sealed up, to be honest with you. It's pretty tough to push those through, but uh, I'm still gonna put some tape on it. And uh, once we do that, I'm just gonna kind of coil up the, these other wires for now. And I don't know whether we'll start on the outside of the truck, up top here with the wiring. Make sure you also make sure you plug your windshield wiper motor back in. Um, but I don't know whether we'll work on the outside of the truck or the inside of the truck. But either way, I'm gonna put all this back together, including the inner fender liner, and we'll either start working under the dash or we'll come up under the truck and get power. Wanted to show you what I got here so you can see I've got everything loomed up, got everything zip tied. I can go ahead and put the inner fender back in, drop this thing down. Um, I did go ahead and solder our fuse holder. You can see that guy right there. Um, I figured, you know, since it was down there, it'd be easier to do it right then. So that's what I did. And I've got this stuff just kind of draped up here, but at this point, I just want to go ahead and get the inner fender in place and um, we'll be finished with that. I can get this thing back on the ground, which will make it a little easier to work up top and inside for that matter. Now we've got that all tied up underneath. We still got a, you know, several pieces of wiring we got to do inside. So initially guys, I, I had thought that I wanted to put the gauge right here. Okay, so I was gonna make a little plate and kind of put it here, but I don't, I don't necessarily love that. And the reason why is nothing else is white faced in the truck. And so the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't know that I necessarily want to see it all the time. So here's what I'm thinking. It comes with a mount that you see I've got hooked on it right now. I'm thinking I may just put it right here. So we've got easy access to it. It's not going to interfere with anything. I can still use my console. And what I'll do is I will drill a hole like right here and we can run all our wires down, be nice and tidy. I don't know, what do you guys think? I just, like I said, I just don't know that I love, I think I want it like this, so when I'm looking at it, you know, I can just take a peek and see how much air is in it, and I can adjust accordingly. That way I don't have to look at it all the time. I just, I just don't think I love that. Um, if it looked more like the stock gauges, I'm just pretty picky about gauges, guys. I don't, I don't love a bunch of clutter in my truck. I mean, I guess, you know, a guy could buy a pillar pod and put it there. Uh, I thought about maybe even up top, but that's, you know, quite a bit and it doesn't really fit even without the bracket on it. It doesn't really fit there. I just, I don't know. I think this is what I'm going to do. So I think I will take I've just got this bolt ran through right now. I think I'll go ahead and take that off. And um, that could be a problem because it tightens from that side. I may have to move it more over there or here. I don't know, I may experiment here, but either way, I'm, I'm almost 99% positive that this is where I wanna put it. Okay, I've committed to putting it here. I'm doing it. Um, so I need to drill a hole. And I want I need that hole to be big enough to run uh, just the end of that gauge. I don't even have the gauge in here, but the, the little bitty wires on the end of the gauge, we obviously got to go through that and then we got to bring an airline through. So, um, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to use a stepped drill bit that works really good. This is just plastic. So it should be relatively easy to drill. And I'm going to kind of place this guy where I think I'm going to want it somewhere like right in that area. I'd love to put it up a little closer, like in a corner right here, like this. The problem is the way the screw goes in, it only goes in one way. And that's the way I need to, I need to mount it. So I don't think I can get the screw in there. There's no way I can get the screw in there if I, unless I put it in the middle. So I'm just gonna put it in the middle and uh, really like, you're never gonna see the thing unless you know it's here. Uh, I, I can't put it all the way at the bottom because I need enough to bend that airline coming in. Obviously, I don't want a 90 and put a kink in it. Um, so I need it, you know, somewhat higher because of that. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole. We are definitely committed now. So you can see I've got the mount on there. Went ahead and put those in. I wish it had came with black screws instead of chrome or stainless but either way uh, like I said we're not gonna see it so and you can see the hole down below that I drilled and so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put the gauge in there and I've got some extra line that I'm gonna run I'm gonna go ahead and put the line in 
and uh, put it all together. Re really, all you have to do is push the line on, set it in that little pod, and hopefully we can snug it down. Got it mounted in here, and uh, honestly, guys, it's pretty solid. Uh, I thought with that being just a plastic mount, you know, but that's airing up. That's down, I believe. I don't know. There's two down arrows. I don't know what both do, but up and then down. So more solid than I thought. So you can see I've got the, the wire and um, an airline ran through here. We just need to basically tie up our connections from down there. I'm just going to go up um, over the top, basically come through the same place like your cigarette lighters would come. And uh, then down underneath. I may, I don't know, I may go underneath that. I'm not real sure yet. I could just tuck it up beside the carpet even. I don't know. We got a couple different spots we could go here, but either way, we need to route all this stuff in. And we also need to get, I'm thinking maybe I might just actually put the wiring harness and the relay. And you remember I said that it has a, basically a valve that keeps a steady pressure in it. I may put that in here as well. I don't, I don't really know. We'll just have to experiment. We've got enough room right here. We could put it. And honestly, it's probably not a bad place to put it. Let's take a look at what we got now. Um, so here's what I did. I ran that airline out of this and the wiring down underneath the dash. I was originally gonna put it right here, uh, but I didn't want it banging around on this plastic. And to be quite honest with you guys, I think it'll be fine right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, snap all this stuff back in, get it back together, and then we will go under the dash and uh, hook up just the remainder of this. There's not a ton to hook up, but it's just trying to find a spot where you like it. I don't love stuff just tucked under the dash. I like to be neat with my stuff. So I'll probably zip tie it along that leading edge of that bottom, like this kick panel down here uh, or the knee bolster. Uh, that's probably what I'll do, but I'll kind of show you guys as I go what's going on. And uh, I did, I will tell you this, this is the next day. I hooked this up last night. I aired it up manually in the back and it held 30 PSI all night. So we don't have any leaks, which is good. And um, really all we need to do here is just, I'll just put this back together. I went ahead and vacuumed this out. That was making me a little crazy too. So we'll get underneath this dash and see if we can finish this up. What a mess we have made now. So here's what we've done. You guys saw that I drew or yeah, pulled the line out of the console here. I hooked up, went and hooked up our low pressure switch. And so the gray and the black go on that. You guys, um, it doesn't matter which goes where. So we've got the line T, there's a T in that, obviously. The line that came from through the firewall, the, the air line, went into that. The line that goes into the console went into the other side. And we got the gray and black hooked up. Now, uh, the red wire that we ran from the compressor from the back through the firewall, I've got that hooked up to the red wire that comes on this harness. The black wire that we drug through the firewall, remember I didn't have any extra of any other color, we hooked to the pink. That's going out to the fuse block under the hood. And then these are pretty much um, the only ones you have left. Now they come with these connectors on them and words can't describe how much I hate these. Um, it comes with three of them in, or four of them in place. Oh, sorry, three of them in place. And you need to crimp three on the other side. I just soldered these connections. So what you need to do, the green and the red, we hook to the pink, the black hook to the black, and now this is coming out of the, the gauge and the console, this gray wire. They're really thin, so that's what I'm talking about. Black to black, uh, the green and red out of the gauge goes to the pink, and the white out of the gauge goes to the gray. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm not going to tuck any of this up. So obviously we've got a ton of stuff just laying here on the floor, and it looks pretty ratty, I know. But, guys, look, you're going to probably want to move stuff around and so i like to test it before i go tucking everything up underneath so the last thing we need to do is we need to go out here under the hood and we need to find a home for that fuse and the yellow wire which is actually connected to a black wire which is connected to the pink so pink goes to the black because it didn't have any other color to the little yellow piece that they send you and that has the fuse in it. So we got to figure out a, a spot where we can put the fuse. It is supposed to only be on uh, when the key is on. I'm hoping maybe we can find something out here. I don't know how great it's going to look for now, but I just want to get it plugged in to test it. Now this kit comes with another spade connector 
Obviously, like I said, this goes to the black, to the pink. I've got this fuse jumper. So how this works is you put your fuse on top of it and then it has a spade connection at the top. So I'm not really gonna concern myself with what is actually hot all the time and, and what's not. I just wanna make sure it works. So I'm gonna shove this guy in here. I'm gonna put a fuse around it and uh, see if we can get some power to this thing and just test to see if it works. Now I've got it just stabbed in there, but we're gonna test. I probably got it on the wrong side. Get the fuse in, maybe. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Okay, the fuse is in and it's not coming on, but I think this is a keyed, I think this one's keyed. So, let's grab our keys and see if the compressor lights up here. I may have it on the wrong side of that fuse. I didn't even test it. Let's see what happens. Nothing's happening. Okay, we'll try the other side of that fuse. Dang it, you missed it. So, it just aired up. Look at that. Okay, so that is, this switch down here is set to, I believe, five pounds. And you can change that. So in the middle of it, there's an adjustment. But as soon as I stuck that fuse in, it went. Definitely working. And so if we want to let it out. It's not quick, but it doesn't have a very big valve in it, I don't believe. That's awesome. That thing's loud back there. Let's see how long it takes to put like 70 or 80 pounds in it. The battery may go dead. That's 50. It's probably more than I've ever put in it. Man. I don't, I don't know that you'd ever need to go any more than that. Let's look at the gap here. It's quite a bit of gap. Yeah, I would never go that much. I, I mean, I guess if you had a really heavy trailer on it, but guys, I'm not planning on, holy cow, that's stiff, dude. I'm not planning on putting a huge trailer on this. Probably won't ever even use my car trailer. Uh, more of a, if I load stuff in the bed type deal. There's 60. Sixty pounds. Good night. It's like a four-wheel drive again. All right, let's let it down. I'll put the. I'll try to put the camera out here. Hold the camera while I let it out. It's going down. That's down to about forty-eight pounds. But I'm excited guys, so it is working. Now, while I'm not in love with the way this switch is hooked up up here, or I mean the, the line, obviously, I'm not gonna leave this all hokey. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a different fuse connector. That This fuse jumper doesn't really work because of the way these fuses are in, in, that, in this box. So I'm gonna have to get one of those like 
add a fuses at the local parts store. I'll list it down below, but uh, I think that's a better option than this. And I may even have one here actually, but um, we're gonna have to do that because there's no way that's gonna work. Before I show you guys us all finished up inside, I do need to go ahead and hook this up. I've chosen to use the cigarette lighter um, spot right here because it is keyed. And so what I've got here is an add a fuse. So we're gonna kind of plug this in right here and then tie it into this line so you can see that um, I am gonna have two 15 amp fuses. I Honestly guys, I didn't wanna go back, cut that, run a new line, solder a new connection. So uh, it isn't gonna hurt anything to have two fuses in line. I may eventually, I'm gonna have to remove this for the next video that we do on this truck. Uh, so I may do it then, but either way, I just, I'm, I'm excited to get it going. We're going to go ahead and plug this in right here, get this hooked up, put the cover back on the box. So everything's nice and hidden. I did put some loom on the wire that comes out and kind of zip tied it up out of the way and then ran it through the bottom of the box right here. So up into this corner. So once we, um, put the cover on, you won't even know it's here. Now, is it my favorite method? No, but for right now, I don't want to lift this up and try to find a spot that we can tag into. Um, you know, to be honest with you guys, this is a daily driver. It's not like a show car. The best case scenario, you'd want to lift this up and see if you could find an extra spot and put a fuse in and it, and it all look factory. But uh, either way, I'm going to get this plugged in and then we're going to test it again and uh, show you inside and, you know, kind of talk about how it works. This is what we've got once we're all finished up. It's all plugged in. So let's get in the truck and give it a test. So you can see I've got all the wires tucked up underneath and um, yeah, no issues whatsoever, guys. Now, I will tell you that you do not have to put that piece in um, that automatically fills it if it's too low. What I like about that is it's pretty dummy proof. So you can set it, right now it's set at five PSI, I think. You could turn that up. Five is what these bags require. So in my opinion, it doesn't hurt anything. Now I will tell you guys this, that, um, I, if I didn't, had I known this was backlit, I would have never put it there, which I mean, I didn't anyway, but that would have drove me nuts. So, um, anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can air this thing up. So the middle button here airs it up. This button on the side here lets the air out. And if you let it out all the way, you'll hear it kick on because that's gonna recognize that it doesn't have enough air in it. Watch when I get, did you hear that? It makes it keep at least five PSI in there. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. Um, no issues whatsoever, <clears throat> other than I'm not 100% sure that we're keyed right there. I tell you what may happen, let's see. Once the headlights go off, see if that goes off. It may not. Interesting. We may have to find another spot to plug for accessory power. I tested that and it went dead when everything shut off. So like generally GM has like a 10 minute retained accessory power. Um, it shut off at that 10 minute mark. So we'll just have to see if it doesn't, then we are going to have to find another spot to grab power. Uh, but what I think I'll do guys is it's got five pounds in it right now. I'm going to set you up on the tripod. I know I'm kind of crammed in here in the garage, but I think I'll set the tripod up over here and then we'll just air it up and I'll just time lapse so you can see how far up it goes, uh, with about 90 PSI that may take a minute. Uh, so I'm going to time lapse it and then we'll let it back down in the same time lapse so you can kind of see the difference. As you can see, this thing moves a lot as far as up and down. And I actually only went to 80 because I didn't want to start the truck 
and it's really windy outside and it's actually night. So I, I went to 80 PSI and it'll go another 10. So you can imagine how high the back of this thing would get as far as leveling stuff out. And like I said, you know, I really didn't buy this to haul like a car trailer, although I could. Um, I, I just, you know, this 4L60 transmission, big old heavy truck, I don't, I don't want to put any more on it than it needs. Uh, but I do randomly use my dad's little aluminum trailer and uh, sometimes we'll pick up some, you know, just random stuff at the house that's really heavy. And I just wanted to have the, the ability to add air uh, on the fly, not have to worry about trying to find somewhere. Everywhere you go now, you have to pay for air. And uh, not always do you know when you're leaving the house how much to put in it. You know, if we decide we're going to pick something up that's heavy, um, you know, I, I wanted to have the ability to air it up anywhere. So uh, all in all, the kit wasn't too bad to install. The hardest part, guys, was running the airline. Uh, just because it's all coiled up and it just it doesn't move around like wire and um, everything's all zip tied up real nice though and in loom and I still have the ability I'll show you here in the back in a minute but remember I put that valve in the back so we can air it up manually if something were to happen to the compressor or whatnot um, but I've let it set for a couple hours there doesn't seem to be any leaks that's something that um, you know as as it progresses I don't know if we'll I've never had any issues before with those airlines. They just push in. It's the craziest thing ever. But if you get a good clean cut with a nice new razor blade, I, I don't think you'll have any issues. Uh, the only other thing is I am going to have to find another power source. The one that I found under the hood, even though I tested it and I swear it went off, for some reason it is not switched so that light is staying on and like i said that would have drove me crazy that backlit display inside my truck at night i would have hated that so i'm glad i decided to put it in the console uh, but all in all i'm pretty excited guys they do make a couple different versions of this kit um, as I said before, they make this is the light duty one, only goes up to 100 psi. With these bags only taking 90 max, I figured it would be a a good option. The the next one up is a heavy duty. I think it would air it up faster. I don't think it would drop it any faster because it can only get so much air out. Um, but I'll list that one below in the description as well as long as the as well as the one that I used here. And then, of course, they make the wireless one. Now, the wireless one would have been nice for the fact that you could have not had to run an airline inside because it's all digital on a gauge. They even make one that hooks to your phone. But I, I didn't see the sense in spending the extra $400 to get essentially the same thing. The other thing is, you know, like I said early in the video, they make one that's what they call dual path. So you can air up each bag individually. Uh, I thought about that to help you know kind of combat the chevy lean this thing does have a little bit of a chevy lean it's a little lower on the driver's side than it is the passenger side i could have put a little more air on this side in the back which would have pushed the front down um if, so if if you guys are wanting to you know not have to trim some off the spring which is really the only way to get that right uh trimming some off the passenger side front spring uh that's that's pretty much your only option other than um, you could put a stock shackle on this side and a drop shackle on the other side to help push this this side up and that side down. But either way, um, like I said, we still got the manual valve down here. We do have our hitch back on, which is exciting. So guys, we are ready to haul a lawnmower if I have to. And uh, you know, I, if I had to go get a car with this and the Yukon wasn't available, I may try to do that i wouldn't want to do it every day just based on the fact that this you know it's two hundred thousand mile truck and the transmission i don't think would like me hauling something super heavy but either way guys uh, i still have a few things that i want to do to this truck so other than cleaning this thing's so nasty right now um, there's a few cleaning items i want to do but there's two more modifications that one of which is already in the truck and we talked about with those wires which I actually didn't have to run those. We'll talk about that in that video, but, and then there's another one. So there's two other things that I want to do to this truck. And then I think we will effectively call it finished, uh, but make sure and check those out. And then I'll probably show you guys a little bit of a detail video because I do need to buff the bed still. I buffed the, the body of the truck. I didn't buff the top or the bed, so I need to still do that. But anyway, guys, if you are enjoying this stuff on these trucks, please like always smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, make sure you go down there, hit the subscribe button. Of course, ring the bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.